Hello students, welcome to all. This is Dr. Vigneshwar Mekha, lecturer in geography. Here we shall discuss about concepts in human geography. For your convenience, this session is divided into the following three major points. One, introduction. Two, geographical concept. Three, concepts in human geography. Firstly, we will begin this module with the introduction. Learning human geography involves students to achieve an understanding of geographical concepts and ideas. It is also about developing the intellectual structures which young people require to understand and progress geographic knowledge and develop in their learning. Geographers explore and understand the spaces and regions that make up the real world, investigating, analyzing, interpreting their features and the process that shape and alter them. In this connection, geographers use several concepts. These concepts or the key concepts are huge ideas which are collectively, exceptionally related to the geographical studies. The concepts are used in conjunction with skills and are applied to topics of the study to create an exclusively geographical way of investigating and understanding the real world. The learning outcomes of the present module. After studying the module, you will be able to define the meaning of geographical concept, to understand the concepts in human geography and to describe the importance of concepts of human geography. Now, we move with the geographical concept. Geographers observe places, processes, objects and look for the common features. The classification of these common features generates concepts that help us to structure our knowledge, understanding and to communicate these with others. Geographical concepts permit us for investigating investigation of associations and connections between human beings and both natural environment and man-made environments. They have a special component and provide a framework that geographers use to interpret and explain information about the real world. The growth of understanding of geographical concepts allow learners to take part as critical, active, informed and responsible citizens. If you think about the concepts in human geography, you can probably produce a long list of examples. They may be abstract, for example, erosion. They may be concrete, for example, beach. And they may be organizational, that is, a way of linking the everyday to higher level geographical ideas such as interdependence interdependence and are belong to another category entirely like you students will possess their own understanding of geographical concepts and their own lists there are certain there are certain concepts also known as fundamental or basic concepts which are integral and significant parts of human geography. Because of the assist in characterizing its diverse nature, this is no one, there is no one definitive list of concepts and no correct categorization of concepts in all. All the concepts in human geography are derived from the sub-disciplines of social sciences like anthropology, psychology, economics, history, and sociology, etc. The teachers may also choose additional concepts that may connect with the local environment or the circumstances of their students. 
such concepts must be geographic in nature they must have a spatial component like environment location distance and region etc however thinking about the world we inhabit in terms of geographical concepts is how we learn in human geography now concepts in human geography there are numerous concepts in human geography we are going to focus on few of them as following one place two space three location four area five region six direction seven distance a scale nine distribution ten movement eleven navigation twelve environment thirteen change fourteen process fifteen perspectives sixteen interaction seventeen sustainability eighteen accessibility nineteen spatial interaction twenty society and twenty one culture and so on now let us discuss about each of the above set concepts in human geography we start with the concept of a place a place is a specific part of the earth surface that has been named and given meaning by people although these meanings may differ places range in size from the home and the locality to a major world region they are interconnected with other places often in complex ways the places are unique but do not have to be studied as if they of they were singular for in seeking understanding and explanation geographical study general processes and look for similarities as well as differences in the studying place in colleges we describe and explain places in increasing depth their characteristics include population climate economy landforms built environment soils and vegetation communities water resources culture minerals landscape recreational and scenic quality also some are tangible such as rivers buildings while others are less so such as wilderness and socio economic status explore people's aesthetic emotional cultural spiritual connections with places the role of the places in their own feelings of the identity sense of place and belonging and the ways they experience and use places the second one is space space in geography is the three dimensional surface of the earth why historians study the change over time geographical study emphasizes differences across the spaces this is of particular interest in understanding the rich diversity of environments peoples cultures economies that exist together on the surface of the earth in geography we develop a deeper understanding of space that is the spatial by investigating the spatial distribution of phenomena and explaining them often by looking for a spatial association between several distributions by learning how to evaluate the environmental economic social and political consequences of particular special special distributions by studying the influence of absolute and relative location on the characteristics of places and people's lives and recognizing that 
improvements in transport and communication systems have greatly reduced the time taken to send goods, capital, information between places which have increased the speed at with economic, uh, which economic and uh, cultural impacts spread around the world. By investigating the ways that space is structured, organized and uh, managed by the people for different purposes. The concept, third concept is the location. In human geography, the term location refers to geographical situation, maybe specific part or a point or a position on the surface of the earth where objects, organisms, events are situated. The knowledge of location is considered crucial in geographical studies. Thus, location is a key concept which denotes to a particular position within space, usually a position on the surface of the earth and plays a key role in the physical and cultural realms. In fact, location exercises a boundless control on the economic, social, cultural and political activities. It is important to know about the terms sites, site and situation in order to better understanding about location. Geographers also di distinguish between site and situation. Site means where the object is exactly located. For example, the site of Hyderabad is on the river bank of river Musi. The situation denotes the location of an object in relation to the others. For example, Hyderabad city is situated in South India. We can explain this uh, site and location with the figures that is uh, that appears on the screen. In general, there are two ways to describe the location. One, absolute location. Two, relative location. Absolute location, also known as a geometrical location, which identifies position on the map in terms of latitudes and longitudes. For example, Delhi, the capital city of India, is located at 28 degrees 38 minutes north and 77 degrees 12 minutes east longitude. So, geometrical precise statements are often essential. Absolute locations are static. Relative location, also known as geographical location, which is the location of a point or place in relation to another point or place. The location that determined by natural phenomena are also known as the natural situation. A natural situation of a place or an area may be related to the landforms such as continents, oceans, mountains, rivers and plain, etc. Natural situation impacts significantly human life and activities. Relative locations are dynamic or changing. For example, the location of Hyderabad city in relation to the roads, railways and airways change over time. The next is concept of area. Place, area and region are the geographical concepts which have been developed by different geographer to make sense of the real world. Generally, the term can be defined as a part of space on the surface on the sur earth, which has def definite extent. On the other hand, an area may be defined as a space occupied by the surface of an object. In geometry, Area is measured in square units like square centimeters, square feet and square inches, etc. Though a significant characteristic of an area is its extent, then area may be differing in its size, example small area or medium area or large area. 
The another one concept is the region. A regions are groupings of geographic information. A region is a geographic area defined by one or more distinctive characteristics. According to Utlesi, any segment or a portion of the earth's surface is a region if it is homogeneous in terms of such as an aerial grouping. A region may be defined at a range of scale by physical characteristics like mountain ranges, drainage basins, politically by official decisions about boundaries and names and by common usage by selecting a particular characteristics like the western gods of peninsula India. Regions can be based on physical features such as a watershed, political boundaries like a country, county, country or continent, culture or age, religion or other characterized geographies too. Regions can be formal, functional or perceptual. Formal regions are known as homogeneous regions or uniform region. Entities within a formal region share one or more common traits such as the residence of a country. A functional region is a region anchored by a focal point. Examples are a custard service area for a restaurant delivery service or the school district for an elementary school. A vernacular region also known as a popular or perspective region is a geographic area that exists as a part of a culture or ethnic identity and therefore don't adhere to political or formal regional boundaries. Regions are important in terms of scale. They can be seen, defined at each of the local, national, international scales. The figure on the screen discloses you the examples of regions at a variety of scales. And the next is direction concept. Like location, the concept of direction is central to human geography and GIS. Direction refers to the position of something related to something else usually along a line. In order to determine direction, a reference point or a benchmark from which direction will be measured needs to be established. One of the most common benchmarks used to determine direction is our Z's. Egocentric direction refers to when we use our Z's as a directional benchmark. Describing something as to my left, behind me or next to me are examples of egocentric direction. As the name suggests landmark, direction uses a known landmark or geographic features as benchmark to determine direction. Such landmarks may be a busy intersection of a city or a prominent point of interest like the uh, Colosseum in Rome or some other features like a mountain range or a river. The important thing to remember about landmark direction, especially when providing directions, is that the landmark should be relatively well known to all. In Oman Geography and GIS, there are three more standard benchmarks that are used to define the directions of True North, Magnetic North and Great North. True North is based on the point at which axis of the Earth's rotation intersects the Earth's surface. In this respect, the North and South Poles serve as the 
geographic benchmarks for determining direction. Magnetic north refers to the point on the surface of the air where the earth's magnetic fields converge. This is also the point to which magnetic compass point. Note that magnetic north falls somewhere in the northern Canada and is not geographically coincide with the true north or the north pole. Grid north simply refers to the northward direction and that grid lines of latitudes and longitudes on a map called a graticule point 2. The next is the distance. It is measured in a number of ways in its simplest form it is the space between different locations and can be determined using an absolute measure, absolute measure such as kilometers. Complementing the concept of location and direction is the distance. Distance refers to the degree or the amount of separation between locations and can be measured in nominal and absolute terms with various units. Human geographers measure distances in terms of time and cost are rather more difficult to measure in terms of cognitive or social variable, variable. When we can describe the distances between locations nominally as large or small or we can describe two or more locations as near or far apart. Absolute distance is measured or calculated using a standard metric. The formula for the distance between two points on a planner that is flat surface is the following. Calculating the distance between the between two locations on the surface of the earth however is a bit more involved because we are dealing with a three dimensional object. Moving from the three dimensional earth to two dimensional maps on paper, computer screens, mobile devices is not a trial, tri uh, trivial matter. The next is we also use a variety of units to measure the distance. For instance, the distance between London and Singapore can be measured in miles, kilometers, flight time on a uh, jumbo jet, or uh, days on a cargo ship, etc. Whether or not such distance make London and Singapore near or far from each other is a matter of opinion, experience and patience. Hence. The use of absolute distance metrics such as that derived from the distance formula provide a standardized method to measure how far a way or how near the locations are from each other. The next concept is the scale. Primarily, scale is related to the space in geography. Scale denotes to the sizes of something compared with the something else and is used in one of two uh, practical ways in geography. In the sense of cartography, scale refers to the depicted feature size in a map relative to its actual size in the real world. Therefore, a map scale is the ratio of a distance on the map to the corresponding distance on the ground. For example, 1 centimeter on a map may represent 20 kilometers on the real ground. A map scale impacts how it can be applied. Small scale maps show a larger area in less detail often being useful to depict an overview or a context for what is being studied. A map of India and its surrounding highlands would be a small scale and a small, a small scale map as shown in the figure that appears on the screen. For example, the scale of such a map may be 
one is to uh, 20 crores but large scale maps depict smaller areas with greater information for example topographic maps which show individual buildings are drawn based on large scale the large scale of a topographic map may be 1 is to 25,000. The figure on the screen is an example of large scale map. By studying a map scale, observations and inferences can be done about the influences of these processes and it connects to land use change. Generally, a map scale can be expressed in many ways that is statement scale or RF scale or linear scale. Another use of scale is observational. Map scale is the logical and descriptive size based segments into which geographical geographers partition the world in order to structure the study and understanding the spaces, regions and phenomena. The phenomena which is studied by many geographers may be formed at micro, meso or macro spatial levels. The scales used by the geographers can be summarized as local, regional, national and global scales. For instance, a community speaking dialect may exist at local while a language can be found regional or global level. Geographers need the capability to spontaneously zoom in and zoom out in their scale view when looking for elucidations, associations, impacts and outcomes of and between phenomena. The next concept is the distribution. The geographic facts, pattern, within an area is known as distribution. In other words, it is the geographic facts distribution such as towns, villages, crops, industries, churches, mosques, etc. Distribution is often explained with reference to the distance between them and other geographical facts. It involves the arrangement of land features or the objects on the surface of the earth. It can occur at all scales and often patterns can be observed and described as the arrangement of phenomena. The distribution of geographic facts is not uniform across the earth's surface. This is owing to a range of factors including variations in the physical landscape and natural environments. Some important variations in the policies, management strategies, socio-economic conditions also have an influence on the distribution of geographic facts in any given region or country. Human geographers have classified the distribution into, three, into point pattern. A. Clustered pattern. B. A random pattern. C. Uniform pattern. A clustered pattern is typically produced when the geographic facts benefit from close proximity, for example, speciality, retail outlets such as grocery stores, stores, ready made garments, medical stores, etc. A random pattern may be the result of a random process may reflect the influence of more than one process or may represent a, a temporary state during changing circumstances. A uniform or dispersed pattern is produced when geographic facts benefit from separation because they compete for surrounding space. For example, urban centers and central places in a region as shown on the figure on the screen. The third and the tenth concept is the moment. Moment involves a change in the phenomena location like place, 
a people idea and goods by travel are flow the transport infrastructure growth and mode of transportation can have an impact on the movement of commodities and services and is a significant consideration in urban planning and land use change the people's movement to outer suburbs and urban rural fringes can rapidly modify land use movement is an important consideration in land cover change considerations that are increasingly affected through this uh, desertification the impact of this process can be the movement of people from rural to the urban area or the movement of sand and soil no longer held in the place by vegetation resulting in dust and sandstone evidence the movement can be the represented in various ways geographically color lines can be show the date of spread while arrows can show the distance and direction of the movements take place the next is the navigation concept transportation maps like those discussed previously illustrate how we move through the environments where we live work and play this moment and in particular destination oriented travel are generally referred to as navigation how we navigate through space is a complex process that blends together our various motor skills technology mental maps awareness of location distances directions and the spaces where we live what is more our geographical knowledge and spatial awareness is continuously updated and changed as we move from one location to another the acquisition of geographic knowledge is a lifelong endeavor though several factors influence the nature of such knowledge we tend to rely on the three following types of geographic knowledge when navigating through space one landmark knowledge refers to our ability to locate and identify unique points patterns or features that is landmarks in space two road knowledge permits us to connect and travel between landmarks by moving through space three survey knowledge enables us to understand where landmarks are in relation to each other and to take shortcuts